Here are 10 accessories I'd recommend for the Sony ZV-1 presented in the order in which I would prioritize purchasing them. So the first thing that you're gonna need to even record any video is gonna be an SD card. I'd go with at least a 64 gigabyte card, and this will give you about one hour and 15 minutes of 4K video. Two things to consider before buying cards is going to be the brand name and the speed. There are black market counterfeit knockoffs out there, so just make sure that you're purchasing from a reputable retail source. On all SD cards, you'll see a speed, which is a number next to a megabits per second. I'm able to record 4K video just fine with 95 megabits per second. I'm not really seeing those online anymore and 170 and 200 megabits per second seem to be replacing those now. I personally use and would recommend SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. I'd also recommend buying about three to four 64 gigabyte cards, or if you got the money, three to four 128 gigabyte cards. I rarely fill an entire 64 gigabyte card with one recipe. And if you're shooting more than 128 gigabytes per recipe, you're probably over filming or talking way too much. One other thing I like to do is label my cards, just so I can keep track of which card is which and which card that I shot on and it also wouldn't hurt to get yourself a SD card holder. The next thing that I would recommend getting is at least one extra battery and a battery charger. The battery life on the ZV-1 is trash and it does not come with a battery charger. So you actually have to plug the camera into the wall to charge the battery. I would recommend getting a Sony brand battery and the charger but there are some knockoffs on Amazon for a whole lot cheaper. I bought this three pack with a charger for 20 bucks and it's been working and knockoff batteries are just kind of a gamble. They're, you know, they're kind of hit or miss. But before you go and buy 20 batteries, just watch the rest of this video because you don't need that many. I have another workaround for that. The next accessory that I'd recommend getting is gonna be a tripod. I literally bought four of the cheapest tripods on Amazon to make a comparison video, which I'm still working on, as well as another video that breaks down the five main things that you wanna consider when buying a tripod for cooking videos. The main thing that you're gonna wanna consider is if your tripod is tall enough to shoot over your counter or stovetop when it's placed on the floor. My stove is 36 inches tall, and ideally you'd want to get the camera up high enough to shoot down onto your stove or prep area. I think something around the max height of 65 to 75 inches would be perfect. I'll put some tripod recommendations in the description ranging between 25 and 75 bucks, and the best one on the list, in my opinion, is only 50 bucks. The fourth thing that I would recommend is gonna be lighting. Now, technically this isn't an accessory for the camera, but it's gonna greatly improve the image quality of your cooking videos. This subject is a video in itself, so I'm not really gonna dive into it here, but I'll put a link to that video in the description. But I did just want to at least mention lighting right now because I'm listing out the accessories in the order in which I would prioritize purchasing them. And this would be the fourth thing that I would recommend purchasing for your ZV-1. The fifth thing I recommend is great audio. I also have a whole other video breaking this down. I'll have the link in the description, but here are the three mics that I would recommend looking into listed from most expensive to cheap, as well as from best solution for cooking videos to good enough. The first is gonna be a good wireless mic setup. Rode, DJI, and Godox make amazing wireless mic systems. And the way that they work are, you attach a receiver to your camera, and then you'll wear a wireless mic transmitter. You can get pretty far from your camera, but you'll still get really nice crisp audio. I'm wearing a wireless mic right now. Some come with two transmitters, so you can mic up two people, or you can wear one and then place the other one close to your food to capture great cooking sounds. Prices range between 130 and 350 bucks. The second option is gonna be a shotgun mic. Now you might see these typically mounted on a camera, but the further that you are from this mic, the worse your audio is gonna sound. So if you wanna use a shotgun mic, you'll also need to look into buying some other accessories to get that mic closer to your mouth when you're talking to the camera that's far from you. I break down how to do that in my other video in the link in the description. The cheapest and easiest option is buying a wired lab. This one was around 40 bucks and it comes with an extra long cable. The way it works is you would plug this into your camera in the mic input and then you would run this cable all the way into your kitchen. Preferably, you'd wanna hide it behind your shirt or an apron and then you would clip it somewhere close to your mouth. I think it works pretty damn good and you just gotta remember that you are attached to your camera before you start walking all over your kitchen and possibly yank your camera onto the floor. 
floor. You can also get kind of tangled up in the cable going back and forth between your prep table and your camera. So you just gotta be careful if you're gonna use this option. So earlier I mentioned batteries and I still recommend getting at least one extra battery. But the ultimate power hack is using an external battery bank to power the camera. The thing about running off of just the battery on the ZV-1 is that, well, it doesn't last very long, so you gotta keep swapping them out. And anytime that your camera does an auto shut off when it's not recording, will require you to go back to your camera, wait for it to turn back on, and then it zooms all the way out. So then you'll have to zoom back in and then reframe your shot. All of this takes time, and that might not be something that you have when your food is burning and you need to quickly flip it right now. That's why I like using an external battery bank to keep my camera charging and it never shuts off. Small Rig makes a battery bank holder with a clamp that allows you to mount this to your tripod so it's not just hanging off your camera all willy-nilly. I'll have links to all of this stuff along with the cable that you'll need to plug this into your camera. You also might come across what's called a dummy battery when you're looking on Amazon. I would not recommend getting this. The way it works is that you put this in your camera in place of the battery and then you plug it into your battery bank. If you have the slightest bump and this dummy battery gets unplugged while you're recording, it will corrupt that video file and maybe your entire memory card. That means you're gonna lose all of that footage that you just shot because the power was killed before it had time to write that data to the card. That's why I recommend using a actual battery in the camera so that it's always powered. And technically, the battery bank isn't powering your camera. It's just keeping the battery inside of your camera charged. So if your battery bank was accidentally unplugged or dies mid-shoot, you still have power going to your camera from the battery. The seventh thing that I would recommend is going to be a small rig cage for your camera. The ZV-1 has a major design flaw and they put the tripod mount screw right next to the battery and memory card door. So if you got a quick release plate on your camera, you need to take that off to get to your card or battery. This is a total pain in the ass, especially if you're in a hurry mid cooking shot. The small rig cage mounts to the camera from that same screw at the bottom, but now it adds more mounting points off to the side. So you can use a quick release plate and still have access to that battery or memory card door. It also makes it easier to grip and hold the camera and it adds some protection to the bottom and the side. There are also mounting points on the side of the cage, which allow you to mount your camera vertically if you wanted to do so. Just keep in mind that this is also where your battery bank charger and mic plug into. So depending on what quick release plate system you're using, this could be an issue and it can block those ports on the camera. That's kind of why I like using these small rig arc quick release plates and system for all of my tripods and cameras. But if you don't want to buy all of that right now, an $8 workaround is this small rig ball head that you can sandwich between your camera cage and your tripod quick release to give you some space to plug all of those things in. The eighth accessory is this newer wide angle lens adapter. This thing is great if maybe you have a smaller kitchen or space and you just need your shot to be a little bit wider. I like this specific lens because it mounts to the camera by attaching this adapter and you can easily add or remove the actual lens part if you don't want to use it. One thing to consider is that this will only work with the L bracket version of the small ring cage. So if you get the small rig full cage, it uses the same spot that the lens uses to mount to the camera body and you can't use them both together. The ninth accessory has honestly been a game changer for me when I bought it in 2022 and it's this Sony camera remote. This thing is damn near a necessity for me at this point and I cannot express to you how much time and energy this thing has saved me. If you've been shooting cooking videos, you totally understand how much of a pain it is to walk back and forth between the prep table and the camera to constantly have to start and stop recording. It also has a little light on it, so I know that my camera's recording and I have the ability to zoom in and out if I wanted to. And there's some other functions on there as well that I don't really use, but you might find helpful. This thing saves so much time and energy when it comes to filming and editing and it's totally worth the price. Highly recommend it. The 10th accessory is going to be my cooking creators club. Sorry, I just needed a 10th accessory because it sounds and looks better than nine on a thumbnail, but I'll have the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Aloha.